I've been meaning to do another vlog since my, uh, that long ramble that I did, that, that almost two hour long ramble, uh, commentary on, uh, my first viewing of, uh, Evangelion 2.0, You Cannot Advance. Um, I've had several opportunities and I've had several topics I wanted to bring up, but just some of them would have run really longer than 15 minutes. Just, you know, that would not have happened. And others just, eh, I didn't know if it was vlog worthy. I'm still getting used to vlogs. Not, not that this is really a vlog, but eh, I should have done something when I reached 200 subscribers on my channel, but I didn't. Um, and I am now up to 250 subscribers. Thank you very much to all of you for your support. Oh, by the way, for those of you who have been sending me friend invites, um, as I said, my first vlog was my first or my second. I can't remember now. Um, the reason I don't f that I don't approve the the friend thingy is because I don't remember your names or whatever. So if you have sent me a friend invite and I haven't answered you yet. Go ahead and send a private message to me. PM my YouTube account, okay? Uh, don't don't resend a friend invite, okay? Because it'll just get lost in there. So just send me a private message saying, "Hey, I friended you. Would you please friend me back or whatever?" And and I'll get to it because mo most of the names that I friended, I know you guys have interacted with you on uh, on Collection DX's channel, but most of the others, they're just you're just. I'm assuming you're just people who have randomly run across me like what I'm doing. So, for those of you who have sent friend invites and I haven't responded, uh, please send me a private message and I'll see what I can do there. Because th me ignoring them is my way of weeding out the uh, the spammers and the trolls and whatnot. So, that's why I've been doing that. It's, it's not because I don't like you. It's mostly because I don't know you. Something else I want to address here real quick was I posted a little notation or whatever it is in the comments section on my channel. Was it a notary, notoriety, something like that? Um, asking if any of you would be interested in hearing uh, the, the, the full details of the origins of my username, Evangelion Unit 4A. Um, I didn't get any responses to that. Um, I actually did record quite a bit of material for it, just as I am now. But I didn't think anybody would be that interested in listening for that long about a fan fiction which was written over ten years ago and was never finished. I mean, was anybody interested in hearing that or listening for 45 minutes or an hour to that? So, And I posted a note saying, hey, would you guys like to hear about this? And nobody responded. So I guess people don't pay attention to those little note things. I don't much either, so eh. But for some time now, I've been wanting to... Uh, justify the creation of this YouTube channel. It was never meant to be just an offshoot of Collection DX's uh, work. I mean, I, I do my thing for Collection DX, but this YouTube channel, which you're listening to right now, is my channel. I do whatever the fuck I want to with it, including swearing my ass off. Uh, and I've been looking for a topic of some kind I can post something that's not related to Super Sentai or Power Rangers, that's not related to Evangelion, the little bit of Gundam I know, Macross, Lego, anything like that you've ever heard about me talk about on Collection DX. It's a little difficult to find a topic for that. But the thing that's finally driven me to post a vlog today, of all days, April 1st, uh, and, and this is not a joke, by the way, the, the thing which has brought me here actually didn't happen today, but it actually happened yesterday, uh, March 31st, 2011. We, uh, we had to put down our, uh, our two cats, uh, Garfield and Frisky. They were old. The reason we put them down is just old age. I mean, my God, they were, they were two months shy of their 17th birthday. I mean that that's that's really long lived for household cats. They were uh, mackerel tabbies, if uh, if I understand the term correctly. Um, Garfield was mine, and when he was at the shelter, we uh, or they originally called him Harley because he he purred all the time like a like a Harley Davidson. And Frisky was originally called Princess for you know well obvious reasons. Uh, so Garfield went with me, and at the time. You're, you're saying, oh yeah, named like the comic book cat? Well, yeah, named like the comic book cat. Well, comic strip cat, because uh, 
I'd just gotten into the Garfield comics. Uh, I think I was in, I was in middle school when we got them, and I'd just gotten into Garfield comics then, and uh, you know, real funny stuff. And when it came time to renaming him on the way home, uh, I couldn't think of a better name for him. Literally, like, what do you call a cat? Oh, the only cat I can think of was Garfield. Okay, let's let's go with that. And Frisky was the uh, was my sister's cat, and you know she. You know, pretty, pretty princess thing, and my sister couldn't think of anything, so my younger sister, by the way. I only have one sibling, by the way, my younger sister, who's uh, getting married in, uh, what was it, three months now? Yeah, officially three months from now. Jesus. Um, but anyways, uh, my sister got frisky, and I got Garfield, and so that was... <laughs> the ironic thing was, I used to be allergic as hell to cats. Those first, was it six, seven months, I just, I had watery eyes and stuffy nose and I, my sinuses were stuffed all the time. It's just terrible shit happening to me. Um, but eventually I got over it. So, you know, other, otherwise this story would have been a lot shorter. Nowadays, I very much consider myself a cat person. I can just, you know, I just know how they work. It's, 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 it just worked out really well. We sit on two and a half acres of woods here, and so we're literally surrounded by trees on all four sides, um, which which isolates us pretty well because we're actually a couple of miles from the nearest highway, which is which is good. You you can only hear it probably at night, and even then there's not much traffic on it. But uh, they uh, and and I will say this for the longest time they had a very privileged, luxurious life here. So we're, we're fairly stretched out, isolated, and we have very nice private territory. It's very nice. Except for the fact that I hate living in the middle of the trees. My, overact oh, my overactive imagination always says there's something sitting up in those, those cedars and those hemlocks and those fir trees just sitting there waiting to break through the window and grab at me. I'm one of those people who's terrified of being abducted by aliens. Gray aliens in particular. I see gray aliens on TV and it's like, oh shit, I gotta turn away. That's that's not cool. Um, I have blinds in my bedroom where where I do all the filming for my stuff for Collection DX that I put... Most people put, put blinds down during the day when the sun is shining. I put my blinds down at night so that I can't see the things looking in at me. And believe it or not, for the first, what was it, eight years that we lived here... I had great difficulty going to sleep because my bed was facing the windows. And here it is, we put the blinds down, and now I sleep like a baby. Well, you know, when I sleep. But anyways, getting back to it, our cats had a very, very luxurious lifestyle. You know, we, we, we didn't have, you know, fine satin sheets for them to sit on. But, you know, we fed them, and we let them roam free, and we let them sleep with us. And we let them crawl into our laps when we're watching TV or... You know, things like that, and we took good care of them, and we played with them, and we took them to the vet. They never liked going to the vet, you know, what what pet does not like going to the vet? And, you know, they had two and a half acres of woods to run around in, you know, how can you complain about that? We we got them primarily as our mousers, as my dad called them. Um, and, you know, they, for the most part, they did a good job. Garfield, however, in, um, in his earlier years, I think it was like four or five when he finally figured out that he could chase baby rabbits in the spring and summer and if if you didn't know this rabbits actually do make a noise and you know what it sounds like it sounds something like this that's what a that's what a baby bunnies that's what a baby rabbit sounds like when it's being hauled off through the woods by my cat and, and yeah i actually still hear it once in a great while even if he wasn't even if Garfield wasn't responsible for it, but yeah, you can you can hear the sound. I don't know if the big ones make that noise, but definitely the little ones make it. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, rabbits make noise. And uh, you know, once in a while they caught a bird or a mouse. They they were actually they were actually more into chasing mice than they were actually killing them. They Garfield would chase rabbits and he'd bring them to our garage and chew them up there and you know that that turn my stomach every time I had to go clean it up, put bleach on the garage floor, and, and uh, Frisky was kind of was was spunky, but she was also kind of lazy. So she's definitely a lap kitty. If if you sat down, boom, she was there moments later. She was one of those kinds of cats. But you know they're they're 
so many things you can say about a cat. The, the nice thing about Garfield and Frisky is they didn't do a lot of the things that cats are kind of notorious for. Uh, yeah, they peed on the carpet a couple of times, and that wasn't very cool, and we had to cut them off from the family room and the, the back rooms for the rest of their lives, you know, because we didn't trust them going in there unless we were in there and they were actually sitting in our laps. And, you know, Frisky one time, she brought in a baby garter snake right next to my mom's bed um, after she'd gotten up in the morning. That, you know, that made her sick, because she's not thrilled with snakes either. They would both scratch up door frames in order to get in and out of rooms or in and out of the house. And every, every single door frame in our house, well, just about every single door frame in our house has scratch marks on it still. Uh, you know, you tried to spray things and it didn't work. And they shed quite a bit, especially in summer. Frisky in particular, oh god. But, the, you know, they, they didn't lose hair, they just shed a lot for some reason. And even though they shed a lot, the funny thing is, they never dealt with hairballs. We, it must have been the food we gave them for so long, but even when they were kittens, never had to worry about hairballs. Never. I never saw either one of them with a hairball problem. So, you know, they... You know, they ran around, they would climb trees. I, the the nice thing about all the trees around us, which are, you know, most of the trees around here are probably uh, in the 50 to 100 year range or something like that, because this whole area used to be forested, and then they regrew it. And I don't know the whole story, because, hey, I didn't buy the property, and I don't own the property. So all the trees are really tall, and the branches are really high, so I think that was the big reason why they didn't get stuck up in a tree. They didn't have any branches to hang out on. They either had to climb up, they usually climbed up about... Uh, 10, maybe 12 feet at the most, and then they'd have to work their way back down, and that was it. Of course, it would have been an absolute nightmare to get a fire truck in here to try and get them down. That, that would have been a nightmare, because our driveway is just twist and turned all over the place. It's ridiculous. Even the UPS guy has trouble getting through here. So we kind of lucked out there. There are so many things I could say about them, and yet there's... You know, I don't have much more time left to, to talk about it in this vlog, but... I actually have a couple of regrets with them. Probably that I became enamored and so interested in doing stuff on a computer that I was spending less and less time with them. Um, and you know they they could crawl or you know they could come into the room and sit next to me, but you know they were not in my lap and they did not have my full attention. That was and you know it became more noticeable as the years went by. I think the the biggest one for me that I feel the the worst about is that my memory is so poor. And and this is the thing that kept me from continuing in college in 2004 or 2005. I went to every community college for a year and a half. Took a couple of uh was it AutoCAD classes and between the first quarter and the next quarter I'd forgotten pretty much everything I'd done in the first quarter. So my DVR counselor looked at me and I looked at her and we're like, this isn't working. Let's just try and find you a job and get it over with. But anyways, my memory, with the exception, it, it's so funny the way it works. And I don't know if it's the Asperger's syndrome, the, you know, the, the high-functioning autism that I have, or if it's something else undiagnosed, I'm not sure. But it's just this ability to remember things that I really like, you know, the statistics on a giant robot, things that are not relevant to the real world. But the thing that kills me most is, while I can remember bits and pieces of their lives, goddamn if I can't remember most of it. And I can picture the cats in scenarios. Like, I can put them here, and I can put them over here in this location during this time of day, blah, 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 blah. But then I confuse myself, is this a memory, or is this something I'm making up on the spot? That's the thing that I'll that that I regret most is that I'll never remember their lives as they were lived. And to remember them as nothing but fantasies is is I don't think is 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 a, a good way to pay tribute to them and to honor them and to cherish them. I'm fast running out of time here. Um I guess I just felt the need to and and I've been I've been scrambling for the last four or five days now to try and write down everything I can that I remember about their lives uh, as accurately as I can uh, with feedback from my parents and my sister but I guess I just felt the need to record this in some fashion permanently and share this this loss that I'm feeling and, and, and find some way to deal with it I 
I only got, what was it, five hours sleep last night. I went down at one thirty, got up at 5.30, something like that. Because I didn't feel him sitting there on the foot of my bed. Last night we were watching a Netflix movie, and they weren't sitting in our laps. They weren't wandering around just doing their cat thing. And, and that that's really upsetting to me. Really upsetting. And that that's probably be the thing that I that I miss most about them. And the the reason that I've put this put this on YouTube of all places. This is Ava Unit 4A saying thanks for watching.